Welcome to our continuing YouTube video series on employment law. My name is Christopher Neufeld of Neufeld Legal. And in this particular video, we'll be discussing when you're fired from a large company, or you might be terminated as the term is used, permanently laid off. Uh, you depart on circumstances that are demand your departure. When we look at the upper management, the leadership, the CEOs, the presidents of these large companies. They really did not much care for you. They don't really have any stake with you. You're just one of many people who are working for them. And what little interest that some of them do have, and there are genuinely some higher up personnel who have a limited interest in the well-being, the financial security of their employees. That might well be the case. But at the same time, they typically, and this is why they succeed and they grow to these higher positions, is typically these individuals have a greater concern about their own financial well-being, their own financial interests because they even look from a legal perspective, their obligation is not so much to their employees. Technically, a lot of their obligation is to the shareholders, the ownership group, their own family, their own financial well-being. That is where their overall objective is. They're trying to increase the profits of the company. They're not trying to increase the spending on their employees. Their, their objective is to increase the profitability of the company because who do they report to? They report to their shareholders. They report to their investors, their debt holders, their family, themselves, their peers. They try to show off their wealth. And how do they achieve that? Well, they achieve that by focusing on profitability. So they might have revenue, and there might be great amounts of revenue for these large companies. But even though they have great amounts of revenue, what matters is profitability. And in dealing with profitability, one of the avenues that they try to control is employee costs. And that means employee salaries, especially those of hourly workers. So. They, they want to incentivize, yes, with bonuses and the like and other applicable payment arrangements that and pay packages that they provide people with. But at the end of the day, what they're looking to do is they're trying to increase the profitability. So they're not trying to overpay, never overpay their employees. That's not their objective. They're going to pay them what they deem is fair, and if they happen to underpay you, that's a consequence of trying to be as profitable as possible. Their objective is profitability because everything that's tied to profitability is to their betterment and to the company's overall perceived betterment. Meanwhile, trying to overpay one's employees trying to avoid any deficiencies or underpayments is not necessarily to their benefit. Like, they don't try to create cushions so they're ensured that their employees have got every nickel and dime paid. And that is problematic for you as an employee. And you have to understand this in the greater context that on the chain of events, on the, on the way that financials are looked at, they don't look and search to see where you're being underpaid. There, there's no incentive for this. They know this. They know the fact is that employees, and they, their, their view is that employees are, should be satisfied with what they're getting paid. They're probably getting paid overpaid. But from the goodness of their hearts, the company has offered them up employment. And with that employment, they should be happy about what they're receiving. 
they shouldn't be looking for every little nickel and dime. They're that that's what they get. And if they get underpaid, well, you'll get compensated with everything else that you got paid along the way. But that is not how things should be. But that is how things operate. And the only time you're really able to legitimately get a handle on this and take these big companies as an employee to task, unfortunately, is when you're fired, when you're laid off, when you depart the business. Because be prior to that, they have all the power. And they can misconstrue stuff and structure stuff and put you first on the chopping block. So if you're getting underpaid on certain technical aspects when you're still employed by the company, they, they perceive you then as problematic. Why are you arguing about an additional $500, initial $1,000? Well, you do that, you're going to be on the first group that's going out the door. That's the unfortunate reality. That's how people operate. They look at you as a dissension, whatever it is, right? And that's how they perceive things. They don't perceive you as being loyal and happy that you have the job and committed to what you're getting. It's very problematic, but it is the reality that we live in. So you gotta, when you look at it that way, you gotta understand, you gotta be looking out for your own interests. And especially when you've been let go, they, they walk you out the door, they say nice things, they give you, they say, we'll give you a nice reference. What, what does this all mean to yourself at the end of the day? If they've been taking advantage of you, if they've over a 10 year, 15 year career, They've underpaid you, and the, a lawyer can find out where the underpayment is. Why should you now not seek to recoup that underpayment? It might be on the termination. They underpay you on the termination. They underpay you on the severance. They underpay you in other areas. Why do you need to accept that? especially with these big companies, these very large companies where you're just a number in the whole operation and they lay you off with a whole bunch of other people, they terminate you with a whole bunch of other people and now you're floating in the wind at your own devices and there's they couldn't care less. They're still trying to hit their profit numbers. But meanwhile, you've possibly left twenty, fifty, dollars $100,000 on the table. That is absolutely ridiculous. And it should not be something that you allow to happen. So what do you really need to do? What you really need to do is you need to take a deep dive with professional counsel and understand, is there something to pursue here? There might be nothing to pursue, but oftentimes there is. And how do you go about pursuing it? There's risks in pursuing anything. That's true. But there's also rewards especially when you are legitimately entitled to that pay. So what you need to do is seek out legal counsel. You need to get them to concentrate on the stuff and advise you as to what their thoughts are. And if it's deemed appropriate, if there's stuff there to be pursued, and there's a way to do it effectively for you that the net return is substantial enough to justify moving forward, then you should consider seriously pursuing it. And that is the situation you're finding yourself in because they're looking out for themselves. You're, and they're, they don't even think about you much. You need to be looking out for yourself and your family. And that's essential. And too many people are not looking out for themselves and their family, especially when they've been fired, when they've been terminated, laid off, or had to leave their job because of their employer. And you got to get around to it. You need to be looking out for yourself and your family's well-being and financial interests. And that is critical. Thank you.